Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I would like to show you this robot arm from the company T5 Robot. I have no idea if this robot arm is good or bad. So let's open it, let's test it and let's find out if it's worth the money. So let's get started. And by the way over here this is a power supply for this robot arm. And this is mini PC for this robot arm. By the way it looks like it's a Jetson. Jetson Nano. Power distribution board, CAN to USB adapter. So I already started unboxing it. The quick start guide and the robot itself. It's quite small and uh, compact desktop robotic arm. This is the capacitor for the power supply and here is the robot arm. The robot arm is quite small and I already prepared the stand for this robot arm. It has this suction pads to fix uh, on the table. I hope that the holes are going to align. And here's the robot arm itself. T5 robot. This is the base. I think all the structural parts they make from aluminum and the covers they made from plastic. Okay, the holes aligns. Good. So I don't need to reprint this stand. Probably it would be nice to use the washers over here. Just to protect uh, the painting. It seems like the stand is working. And probably it's even overkill this stand for this uh, quite small desktop size robot arm. The connection should be quite simple. The robot arm has two wires. One is for power and another one for the canvas. The power goes here in any of this. In one of these you need to put the capacitor and in one of these you need to put the power supply. So the power is done. This you can directly connect to the canvas uh, to USB adapter or you can use some extension wire. I'm going to use the extension wire. And this one goes to the PC. Now to the PC I need to connect the keyboard, the screen, the mouse and we can power up the robot arm. Everything is connected so let's try to power it up. Let's look at the specs of this arm. First of all it's going to be available through the Kickstarter campaign. I have a pre-production module which was sent to me by T5 robot company for free. I can keep this robot arm after review in any way even if I make positive review or if I make the negative review or neutral review whatever. And they don't pay me anything in terms of money. Be aware that my arm can slightly differ from the final product. As you can see it's ultra light robotic arm. 2.3 kg weight, 1 kg payload, very precise. You can control through the ROS, Pi, Bullet, Raspberry Pi, Python, C++. I think this is what is planned. Right now I can control it only through the ROS with Python but this is the Python through the ROS so I still call it through the ROS and with the C++. They wrote that it's easy programming. We're going to check this. And the fast setup. I think this means uh, that this robot arm is easy to fix somewhere because it's light and small. It has 6 degrees of freedom like it's shown over here. They tell in the manual that you should avoid this cylinder which is uh, directly above the robot arm or below the robot arm. I suppose because of the singularities. Precision, power consumption, harmonic joints, joint range, the main body made from aluminum. And this is the parameters of the Jetson Nano which they included for the controller of this robot arm. The joint speed is quite reasonable. And this is the workspace of this robot arm. The distance from the shoulder to the wrist is 380 millimeters. Let's first power on the Jetson and here is the Ubuntu. Uh, Ubuntu. Let's now the power on the robot. I hope that it's not going to move it. Nothing happened. There are two ways to run this robot arm. The first way is to use the ROS and move it package for the ROS. This is the easiest way. And the second way is to use C++ SDK. I looked a little bit at this SDK, I looked at some examples and it seems like in order to run this with the C++ you need at least couple hundreds of lines of codes. So it's, 
It seems complicated with the C++. That's why now I'm going to use the ROS with the Move It package. Let's put this arm horizontally. By the way, this is approximately the home position of this robot arm. So this is a Move It window with this robot arm at the home position, like it's here. We can move this robot arm either by dragging these arrows or we can change the joint position at the joint tab over here. Seems fine. Plan. Plan. So it works. Back to the home position. The good thing is that I don't feel any backlash at all. It's not uh, super rigid because the robot arm is quite small, but it's uh, quite rigid. Let's try to move it in the certain position where we're going to test the repeatability super quickly. So the camera is going to fix this position. Now I'm going to move it somewhere else and move it back. some kind of random position and let's move it back to where it was. And afterwards in the post processing I'm going to check that it's the same. Now let's try to test the payload. For this I 3D printed a small piece which we're going to install at the end effector over here and like this we can put some weight on this robot arm and see if this robot arm can handle this weight. First of all, let's me put the robot arm to the home position as before. Seems fine. To fix uh, something to the end effector, we are using a super small, super thin, the screws. This is M2 screws and there are eight of them. Now let's put the robot in the horizontal position and I'm going to put the weight on top of it. I'm doing this in the multiple steps just to be sure that it's not going to hit anything. For some reason it went over there. I have no idea why. It should not. Now it should go uh, horizontal. And came back to the proposi position. Who knows why? Don't ask me. Okay, now it's horizontal. Let's put the weight of the half kilo. It uh, can hold it, but can it move up and down with this weight? Unfortunately, I cannot uh, control easily the speed of the motion here. At least I don't know how. So let's uh, go a little bit higher and afterwards we will go a little bit lower. I hope that it's not going to do any jerky motion plan. Okay, it can handle half kilo. It seems like it can handle the half kilo. Let's go a little bit down. A little bit lower than the horizontal plane. Just slightly lower than the horizontal plane. it went up? I don't know. Don't ask me. Okay, it can easily handle half a kilo, one kilo. It can hold it. Let's try to move up a little bit. Probably it can even handle a little bit more than one kilo. Let's go up another four degrees. This jerky motion is quite violent. I don't... Uh, really fun of it. But anyway, we see clearly that it can handle one kilo. It can easily handle the half kilo and it seems like it can easily handle the one kilo. And with the one kilo it still uh, has a lot of energy. With even quite fast motions it can handle one kilo. And back to the home position.
And now it oscillates. I think the PID values are not well tuned for these uh, actuators. I also have the gripper for this robot arm. So let's mount it and see how it works. I don't think the TI5 robot company is going to sell this robot with this gripper, but probably they're going to make their own gripper. But nevertheless, let's test this one. The gripper is fixed and now let's try to run the program which was prepared by the TI5 robot company for the demo, for this demo. Let's run this program. <laughs> it works cool and the motion is quite fluid <laughs> so it's uh, difficult to program this robot, but when it's properly done, it works perfectly fine. I will put the reference to this robot arm into the description to this video. And this robot arm is going to be available through the Kickstarter campaign. Let's quickly talk about pros and cons of this robot arm. I think the main advantage of this robot arm is how it's built mechanically. It's really well built. It's a solid robot arm. There is zero backlash. I think they used harmonic drives on all the axes. And most of the parts are made from the metal. At least all the structural parts are made from metal. There are some covers from plastic, but this is covers and it's even better that they are from plastic like this, it's lighter. The cable management is super clean because all the cables are inside of this robot arm. So it's really perfect. Now let's talk about disadvantages. The wrist of the robot arm is a little bit big because it's wide over here because of this axis and because of the actuator inside this axis. But I think this is going to be the problem only in the specific uh, applications where you need to go somewhere to the uh, narrow spaces. And the second disadvantage is software. I think the software should be definitely improved because right now the C++ uh, SDK is a little bit complicated and uh, difficult to understand. There is a possibility to control this robot arm using the Python, but in this case you are going to use also Movit ROS package. So you have to go through the ROS and uh, ROS is quite big package. And uh, I would like to see the simple Python SDK, the minimalistic Python SDK, which you can run on the Raspberry Pi or something like this. There is no yet a dedicated software for this robot arm, meaning the software which will uh, give you all the status of this robot arm, the temperature of the joints, uh, the torque at each joint and stuff like this. But all these uh, disadvantages, these are software disadvantages. So I hope that the T5 robot company is going to improve their software. And when they're going to do this, this is going to be a really great robot arm. Maybe even open the CAN bus protocol, which is used in order to control this robot arm. And if T5 robot company is going to improve this software, this can make this robot arm really perfect. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Huge thank you to people who support me via Patreon and via YouTube channel membership. Here are their names. Thank you guys and girls. You are the best. As usual, stay safe. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.